The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come from within are what defile. When he got home, away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Even you likewise are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the latrine? Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. For within the man... From his heart come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Our selection from the book of Genesis today, it, it really sets us up. If you're, if you're reading, you could, you could see the, the author really making a point. Who created the heavens and the earth? God. Who made the rain and sent it? God. Um, and who made all the mud and all the soil? Uh, that could receive all the plant life? God. Man tills the soil, but he didn't make it. Okay. Who formed man? God. Who blew life into the man? God. Who planted the garden? God. Who planted the tree of life? God. Who planted the tree of knowledge of good and evil? God. God did all these things. Did man do any of these? And so, in the middle of the garden, there is that tree of life, and he says, you can eat that tree. You can have all you want from the tree of life. Not a problem. But that tree of knowledge of good and evil, please do not touch that. One could say that participating in the tree of knowledge of good and evil requires not doing it without without consulting the engineer's manual on how what God created operates. You have to look at design specifications, and you have to look at the owner's manual. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And so that tree of life, it represents God's image. Man was allowed to eat that. From a New Testament perspective, we would say the Eucharist is the primary source of that tree of life, that fruit from that tree. And then prayer. And then scripture. All these things describe an intimate fellowship with God. In other words, you really don't need the manual. You need to talk to the designer that's how you understand how the whole thing works. And also, praise and worship and adoration. These are all the things that turn us to God. And finally, you can throw in there the conscience. It's the fruit of that life breath that he gave us. That sense that tells us that's not right and that's not wrong. But it sometimes can be deceived. Therefore, I need to consult and stay in contact with this, this God who planted the tree of life so that I can understand 
all the intricacies of human nature. Can't do it without that. When King Solomon was given an invitation by God to ask for anything he wanted, he chose not to have three things were offered to him. Life of your enemies, riches, and what was the third thing? I just lost it. <laughs> Long life. And so he, he said he didn't want any of that. What he wanted was he wanted to understand. He wanted wisdom. I want to understand you, O Lord. That's what he was looking for, an understanding heart. Now, all these things were originally given to man to a degree. These things that were essential to life and what we call supernatural grace, it gave Adam and later Eve what we call preternatural gifts. That's how Adam was able to relate to all the creatures immediately. He knew things. That's how he knew that a lion is a lion, but it's not a cat. You see, Adam knew things. Adam had God's knowledge. And because he was in relationship with God, these things were readily shared with him. In other words, that grace was knowledge not that he accumulated on his own, but it was given to him. In other words, Adam was created to operate with divine assistance. The tree of knowledge of good and evil that he was told not to eat represents moral autonomy. A moral autonomy that says, I will not take reference to God. I will not consult the designer. I will not consult the instruction manual. I just won't do it because I want to do things on my own because I know better. Does that sound like a guy named Lucifer to you? You see the relationship, okay? And so this is where man, in, in asserting his moral autonomy, cre he becomes the created thing who places himself above the creator. And this is a type of blasphemy. Man was given moral autonomy, but the moral autonomy to be guided by God in assisting him to make free choices. It's what, in a sense, it's what we hope for in all our children with guidance, with the proper guidance from good parents, children and children accepting that guidance, they grow up to make good choices, theoretically just like mom and dad. In other words, the image of mom and dad is perpetuated and made visible in the autonomy of the children who are properly raised. That's the ideal. That was the ideal for what God was looking for. But... Adam and Eve chose to eat from that faded tree of knowledge and good and evil without counsel, disregarding counsel, actually. And so Jesus says, what comes out of the man is what defiles him from what's in his heart. That moral autonomy without reference to God means that I am going to make myself as the primary arbitrator of good and evil. And not only that, I'm going to tend toward, because I've put grace aside, I'm going to tend toward what St. Augustine would call concupiscence. It's a leaning toward evil. We don't realize it, but it's there. I'm going to lean in that direction and easily get carried away. And so this is what happens in the heart. So you could say that the heart, because of sin, an original sin, it needs a heart catheterization. St. Paul describes almost to a word this list that Jesus gives. He describes it in Galatians 5, verse 19. Licentiousness. Envy, blasphemy, arrogance, the whole list. It's all the things that St. Paul says are opposed to the Spirit. 
And the Spirit is the giver of knowledge and wisdom of God. And so all these things, when, you, when you're not in relationship with God, you're in relationship with what pushes him away and the gift of his Spirit and your ability to operate in the wholesome nature that he created for us. And so what we need is we need a heart catheterization. And that comes from the tree of life, which is still here. The Eucharist, prayer, scripture, intimate fellowship with God. And the, and the sensitivity to care, to listen to our conscience. That sensitivity to God's will. We need this heart catheterization, and it doesn't come any other place but without Jesus. And as Catholics, how blessed we are that the Eucharist becomes the primary source of this for us, which you are here today. Instead of cursing the elements today, you were like Daniel. Wind and rain, bless the Lord. Ice and snow, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever and enjoy the Eucharist. Regina Jenny, let our name, Alleluia, qui aque meruis di portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit.